I have just chaired a meeting of the Cabinet where we agreed that the Government should call a general election to be held on the 8th of June. I want to explain the reasons for that decision, what will happen next, and the choice facing the British people when you come to vote in this election. Last summer, after the country voted to leave the European Union, Britain needed certainty, stability and strong leadership. And since I became Prime Minister, the government has delivered precisely that. Despite predictions of immediate financial and economic danger, since the referendum we have seen consumer confidence remain high, record numbers of jobs and economic growth that has exceeded all expectations. We have also delivered on the mandate that we were handed by the referendum result. Britain is leaving the European Union and there can be no turning back. And as we look to the future, the government has the right plan for negotiating our new relationship with Europe. We want a deep and special partnership between a strong and successful European Union and a United Kingdom that is free to chart its own way in the world. That means we will regain control of our own money, our own laws and our own borders. And we will be free to strike trade deals with old friends and new partners all around the world. This is the right approach and it is in the national interest. But the other political parties oppose it. At this moment of enormous national significance, there should be unity here in Westminster. But instead, there is division. The country is coming together, but Westminster is not. In recent weeks, Labour have threatened to vote against the final agreement we reach with the European Union. The Liberal Democrats have said they want to grind the business of government to a standstill. The Scottish National Party say they will vote against the legislation that formally repeals Britain's membership of the European Union. And unelected members of the House of Lords have vowed to fight us every step of the way. Our opponents believe, because the government's majority is so small, that our resolve will weaken and that they can force us to change course. They are wrong. They underestimate our determination to get the job done. And I am not prepared to let them endanger the security of millions of working people across the country. Because what they are doing jeopardizes the work we must do to prepare for Brexit at home. And it weakens the government's negotiating position in Europe. If we do not hold a general election now, their political game playing will continue and the negotiations with the European Union will reach their most difficult stage in the run-up to the next scheduled election. Division in Westminster will risk our ability to make a success of Brexit and it will cause damaging uncertainty and instability to the country. So we need a general election and we need one now because we have at this moment a one-off chance to get this done while the European Union agrees its negotiating position and before the detailed talks begin. I have only recently and reluctantly come to this conclusion. Since I became Prime Minister, I have said that there should be no election until 2020. But now I have concluded that the only way to guarantee certainty and stability for the years ahead is to hold this election and seek your support for the decisions I must take. And so tomorrow, I will move a motion in the House of Commons calling for a general election to be held on the 8th of June. That motion, as set out by the Fixed Term Parliament Act, will require a two-thirds majority of the House of Commons. So I have a simple challenge to the opposition parties who have criticised the government's vision for Brexit you have challenged our objectives. You have threatened to block the legislation we put before Parliament. This is your moment to show you mean it, to show you are not opposing the government for the sake of it, 
to show that you do not treat politics as a game. Let us tomorrow vote for an election. Let us put forward our plans for Brexit and our alternative programmes for government, and then let the people decide. And the decision facing the country will be all about leadership. It will be a choice between strong and stable leadership in the national interest, with me as your Prime Minister, or weak and unstable coalition government, led by Jeremy Corbyn, propped up by the Liberal Democrats who want to reopen the divisions of the referendum, and Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP. Every vote for the Conservatives will make it harder for opposition politicians who want to stop me from getting the job done. Every vote for the Conservatives will make me stronger when I negotiate for Britain with the Prime Ministers, Presidents and Chancellors of the European Union. Every vote for the Conservatives will mean we can stick to our plan for a stronger Britain and take the right long-term decisions for a more secure future. It was with reluctance that I decided the country needs this election, but it is with strong conviction that I say it is necessary to secure the strong and stable leadership the country needs to see us through Brexit and beyond. So tomorrow, let the House of Commons vote for an election. Let everybody put forward their proposals for Brexit and their programmes for government. And let us remove the risk of uncertainty and instability and continue to give the country the strong and stable leadership it demands. Mr Corbyn, what's your reaction to the news that there's to be a general election? I welcome the opportunity for us to put the case to the people of Britain to stand up against this government and its failed economic agenda, which has left our NHS in problems, which has left our schools underfunded, which has left so many people uncertain. We want to put a case out there for the people of Britain of a society that cares for all, an economy that works for all, and a Brexit that works for all. Labour's been consistently behind in opinion polls, so you're not particularly in a strong starting place. Would you concede that? Would you concede that you face an uphill struggle from here? We're going out there to put the case, to put the case of how this country could be run, how it could be different, how we could have a much fairer society that works for all, for everybody in our community. That's the case we're putting, and I'm looking forward to doing it. So what will you be doing then over the coming weeks to turn around the polls and secure a Labour victory? We're putting the case out there to deal with the housing crisis, to deal with the education funding crisis, to deal with the National Health Service, but above all about an economy that works for all by investment, by investment in our infrastructure, investment in our manufacturing industries to give real hope and real opportunities for everybody in this country. Labour lost a general election just two years ago. What's different about your offering to the country this time round? We're challenging the economic narrative which says that there has to be huge cuts in public expenditure in order to pay for the banking crisis of 2008. We're saying instead, invest in the economy, invest in the future. We are a party that will put forward a case that will bring about a much fairer, much more decent country than we're getting at the present time, where we have massive inequalities between the very rich minority and, sadly, too many people living in desperate poverty at the other end of the scale. The 8th of June, does that give you enough time to get that message out there? I'm starting straight away and I'm looking forward to it. We will take our message to every single part of this country and we'll challenge the government to debate these issues in every town and city in this country. If Labour loses this election, will you stand down as Labour? We are campaigning to win this election. That's the only question now. Are you the next Prime Minister? If we win the election, yes. And I want to lead a government that will transform this country, give real hope to everybody, and above all, bring about a principle of justice for everybody and economic opportunities for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. MP, leader of the Labour Party. Mr Corbyn, what's your reaction to the news that there's to be a general election? I welcome the opportunity for us to put the case to the people of Britain to stand up against this government 
and its failed economic agenda, which has left our NHS in problems, which has left our schools underfunded, which has left so many people uncertain. We want to put a case out there for the people of Britain of a society that cares for all, an economy that works for all, and a Brexit that works for all. Labour's been consistently behind in opinion polls, so you're not particularly in a strong starting place. Would you concede that? Would you concede that you face an uphill struggle from here? We're going out there to put the case, to put the case of how this country could be run, how it could be different, how we could have a much fairer society that works for all, for everybody in our community. That's the case we're putting, and I'm looking forward to doing it. So what will you be doing then over the coming weeks to turn around the polls and secure a Labour victory? We're putting the case out there to deal with the housing crisis, to deal with the education funding crisis, to deal with the National Health Service, but above all about an economy that works for all by investment, by investment in our infrastructure, investment in our manufacturing industries to give real hope and real opportunities for everybody in this country. Labour lost the general election just two years ago. What's different about your offering to the country this time round? We're challenging the economic narrative which says that there has to be huge cuts in public expenditure in order to pay for the banking crisis of 2008. We're saying instead, invest in the economy, invest in the future. We are a party that will put forward a case that will bring about a much fairer, much more decent country than we're getting at the present time, where we have massive inequalities between the very rich minority and, sadly, too many people living in desperate poverty at the other end of the scale. The 8th of June, does that give you enough time to get that message out there? I'm starting straight away and I'm looking forward to it. We will take our message to every single part of this country and we'll t challenge the government to debate these issues in every town and city in this country. If Labour loses this election, will you stand down? As we are fa campaigning to win this election. That's the only question now. Are you the next Prime Minister? If we win the election, yes. And I want to lead a government that will transform this country give real hope to everybody and above all bring about a principle of justice for everybody and economic opportunities for everybody. First Minister, is now the right time for a UK general election? <laughs> well this is a biggish U-turn in recent political history but it's very clear that the Prime Minister's announcement today is one all about the narrow interests of our own party not the interests of the country overall. You know, clearly she sees the opportunity, given the total disarray in the ranks of the Labour Party, to crush all opposition to her, to get rid of people that disagree with her, and to give herself a free hand to take the country in the increasingly right-wing direction that she wants to take it in. And that would mean not just the hardest possible Brexit, but more austerity and deeper cuts. So now is the time uh, for Scotland's voice to be heard and for people in Scotland to stand up for the kind of country we want Scotland to be. And that's the campaign that I look forward to leading in the weeks ahead. Given your calls for another independence referendum and your resistance to Theresa May's approach to Brexit, are you partly responsible for this early vote? Well, I make no apology, and I don't think anybody would expect me to, for standing up for how people in Scotland, by majority, voted in the EU referendum, which was against Brexit at all, uh, but particularly uh, against a hard Brexit. Now, I think when you listen to Theresa May's statement this morning, it's that democratic opposition, which is healthy in any democracy, that she sees the opportunity to crush. And that would not be, uh, I think, a good way forward and would not be in Scotland's interest. You know, the question of what kind of country we want to be is going to very much be at stake in this election campaign and whether we want that to be a country uh, the future of which is steered and directed by a, a Tory party moving ever more to the right or whether we want the people of Scotland to be in charge so this is a an opportunity to make Scotland's voice heard and make sure that we have MPs from Scotland that will first and foremost be about fighting Scotland's corner. Well, might the, the Tories crush at least some of your gains from the, the last general election this time around? Well, we'll be defending uh, all of the, the seats that we won uh, last time around and uh, I'll be fighting this election to win. I, I uh, think the Prime Minister has called this election for selfish, narrow party political interests, but she has called it and therefore I relish the prospect of getting out there, uh, standing up for Scotland's interests and values, 
standing up for Scotland's voice being heard and standing against the ability of a right-wing Conservative Party to impose whatever policies it wants in Scotland. So I relish the prospect. Will you seek a fresh mandate for an independence referendum in the context of Brexit? I've got a mandate for a second independence referendum. I won that mandate at the Scottish Parliament elections last year. And of course, the Scottish Parliament has since voted by majority uh, for that position. Uh, so that uh, mandate is there and it's clear. This election will be about the kind of country we want Scotland to be uh, and whether we want the Tories to have a free hand in determining that or whether we want to make sure that we stand up for Scotland's public services, uh, for public spending against uh, further Tory austerity. These are the issues that will be to the fore in this campaign and I look forward to leading a campaign on them. But will you have a specific commitment in your manifesto for this election promising another independence referendum within 18 months to two years? My, my position on a second independence referendum is clear and it will continue to be clear throughout this campaign. It is, as I set out in this very room just a few weeks ago, that when the time is right, it should be for Scotland to determine our own future, not for a Tory government to determine that future for us. So that position uh, is the one that we will take into this election uh, and the one that we will have uh, after this election as well. It will be in your manifesto. I'll set out our manifesto in due course, but the position on the referendum uh, will be the one that I set out in this room just a few weeks ago. When will you tell us your next move towards securing the power to have that vote? Well, I had planned to do that over the next few weeks, and that uh, is still the, the assumption I'm working on. Clearly, we have uh, a development today that changes the, the, the nature and the shape of the next few weeks, so I'll consider the timing of that in the context of the election campaign, and of course I'll set out that to Parliament in due course. Can either Natalie McGarry or Michelle Thompson be SNP candidates in this election? Well, the SNP's National Executive Committee will meet over the next few days to set the terms of uh, candidates' uh, selection and these matters, as uh, well as a number of other matters, will be discussed by the National Executive Committee in the proper way. And for the record, maybe academic, will SNP MPs vote for this uh, election when Theresa May brings it to the House tomorrow? Well, we're not going to stand in the way of an election, albeit we think it's an election called for very cynical, selfish, party political reasons. But, you know, it's clear that uh, Labour is not going to vote against it, nor uh, I think are, are the Liberals. Uh, but I think people will judge Theresa May on the reasons for calling this election, and that will be a factor in how people choose to vote. How well are you going to do in this election? You had a, a record result in 2015, winning 56 out of 59 seats. Is the only way down? Uh, I'm going to fight this election to win it, as I did the last time. Uh, I'll go out there. I will make a passionate, principled, strong case for the values uh, and the policies that I believe are important for the future of our country, and I'll put my trust in the people of Scotland. What's your reaction to the announcement by the Prime Minister? Well, it's an opportunity for uh, the people of this country to change the direction of this country, to decide that they do not want a hard Brexit, they want to keep Britain in the single market, and indeed, it's an opportunity for us to have a decent, strong opposition in this country that we desperately need. You only get those things with the Liberal Democrats, indeed only through the Liberal Democrats is there any pathway for the Conservatives losing their majority. Theresa May says it's the right time. Is it the right time for the Liberal Democrats? Well, we've been calling for an early general election since Theresa May became Prime Minister without there being an election uh, uh, last summer. So it's an opportunity for the country, more importantly, to say this is the direction they want the country to go in, not the direction, the extreme direction that Theresa May is taking us in. The Prime Minister obviously thinks this is a good time for the Tory party. Is it likely to be a good time for you, perhaps with Remainers being unhappy out there? Well, I think across the country, people will want to express their view that Britain, whether we are in or out of the European Union, we want to remain in the single market. Theresa May has no mandate to take us out of the single market and for a hard Brexit. It is also the opportunity for the British people to have a decent, strong opposition, something with Labour they now currently do not have. Are you organised? Are you ready for this fight? Uh, Liberal Democrats have candidates selected right across the country. We were prepared for an election that we thought was going to happen in autumn and Liberal Democrats are always prepared. Here we are in Cornwall, the place where our fight back really began almost immediately after the general election two years ago. From this, this springboard we had the opportunity to give the British people the chance to change the direction of our country, to be opposed to a hard Brexit, keep us in the single market and give Britain, Britain the decent, strong opposition that it desperately needs. Let's talk about Cornwall. You were wiped out here in that last election that you just mentioned. I can't affect the result of the last election. I can jolly well affect the result of the next one and the team here today are there to do just that. Most people in Cornwall, I think, will find voted for Brexit. 
And across the country, most people, in fact all people, will not ask their opinion on whether we remain in the single market. As the evidence now becomes clear, this is an opportunity for the British people to say whether you're in or out of the European Union, we desperately need to be in the single market. We're the only party giving the British people that opportunity. Were you surprised by Theresa May's announcement? Did you have any inkling? Well, I always assumed that she would go for an early election at some point. I thought that she uh, needed a mandate of her own and after she was elected, or rather uh, appointed Tory leader uh, last summer. Um, but of course, like the rest of us today, uh, has come as a surprise. Luckily, we're prepared. Thank you very much indeed. Thank We've you. We've got a live for the Daily Politics any just, minute now, so you go Just a we'll quick question from my Sure, yeah, yeah. Hey. The Prime Minister needs a two-thirds yeah. majority to call this an appellation. Are you instructing the Liberal Democrat MPs to back the fall? Well, it's important we have the Fixed Term Parliament Act, but if under the terms of that Act uh, there is a request to dissolve Parliament and call it an early general election, we've been calling for one since last summer, it would seem appropriate for me uh, and my Liberal Democrat colleagues to vote for that. You were here actually to campaign for the uh, local elections. Do they take a back seat now? Well, they still happen. I mean, my message to all these folks behind me is you get out there and knock on doors. We're going to change Britain for good over the next few weeks, but in the next two or three weeks, we're going to change Cornwall, got to change Cumbria, got to change Merseyside, Greater Manchester, uh, indeed all of these parts of the country where there's a desperate need for a new direction, give the opportunity for change. But this is an election that gives Britain the chance to change the direction the Conservatives are taking us in. An opportunity to vote against a hard Brexit it, that I believe the majority of the people uh, join with me in being opposed to, to keep us in the single market and to make sure that Britain has a strong and decent opposition, something that under Labour currently they don't have and they'll only have with the Liberal Democrats.